This is a special report from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. It is sentencing day for Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt. These are the mommy bloggers who are accused of abusing their child in many horrible ways. We're first going to take you to the courtroom for the sentencing of Jody Hildebrandt. Then Ruby Frankie on a separate segment. Be sure to press subscribe so you don't miss any of our coverage of the sentencing in this case. Let's go now to the courtroom for the sentencing of Jody Hildebrandt. Court recalls the matter of State of Utah versus Hildebrandt. Case 2315-01763. Counsel are present. Ms. Hildebrandt is present. Counsel, there is a pre-sentence investigation report. I have read it. Everyone has seen and reviewed that. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Again, the sentence was stipulated at the time of the plea agreement. What what record do we need to make other than going forward with sentencing? Um, I, Your Honor, I it, it would be repetitive. I so I, I had the same statement, just with the last few paragraphs where where I was differentiating between Miss Frankie and Miss Hildebrand. Okay, let's talk about about housekeeping matters first. What about restitution? We we stipulated to keep that open for eight months. It is appropriate, Your Honor, since we don't have any evidence with respect to restitution, and that's because it is still in the process of being gathered by uh, the county attorney's office. It's a it's completely appropriate for the court to make no orders with respect to restitution, other than to reserve all issues regarding restitution, and we have no issue with the eight eight month uh, uh, time frame. And the injunction that was previously issued by the court will remain in effect. It will. In, at least until that time. It will remain in effect until further order of this court. All right. Mr. Clark. Thanks, Your Honor. The state of Utah respectfully requests that the court sentence Ms. Hildebrandt to consecutive prison terms for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse to which she has pleaded guilty. The sentence was agreed to her in her plea agreement and is also recommended by adult probation and parole. Ms. Hildebrandt committed awful acts of child abuse. From May to August 2023, she and her business partner held two children, ages 9 and 11, turning 12, in a concentration camp-like setting in her house in Ivan City. The children were regularly denied food, water, beds to sleep in, and virtually all forms of entertainment. They were isolated from others and were hidden when people came to visit the house. They were forced to do physical tasks, like carrying loaded boxes up and down stairs and doing wall sits or sitting against a wall without assistance of a chair or stool for hours at a time. They were forced to do manual labor outdoors in the extreme summer heat, often without shoes or socks. They were also forced to stand outside on a cement patio in the summer heat for hours and even days. They were beaten, and the 12-year-old was regularly bound hand and foot after he attempted to run away in mid-July. Both children had extensive physical injuries from the abuse that required hospitalization to treat. The injuries from the binding are particularly bad. In addition to the physical abuse, the children were emotionally abused. They each believed to some degree that they deserved what was being done to them. Had the older of the two children not had the courage to run away and ask a neighbor to call the police, heaven only knows how much longer he could have survived. After being caught, Ms. Hildebrandt has shown little to no remorse for her actions. In telephone conversations that will be provided in full to the Board of Pardons and Parole, and which she knew to be recorded, she's repeatedly claimed that she is the victim and the children are the perpetrators. She has gone so far as to say that the things said in this proceeding and covered by the media today will be full of lies. The combination of three factors make Ms. Hildebrandt a significant threat to the community. First, the severity of the abuse she caused to be inflicted on young children. Second, her attitude that everything she did was justified and that she is being wrongfully imprisoned. And third, her training as a therapist and aptitude for using online resources to convince others to follow her guidance. Utah Code Section 76-3401 lays out three factors the court should consider in determining whether to impose concurrent or consecutive sentences. The first is the gravity and circumstances of the offense. The second is the number of victims. And the third is the history, character, and rehabilitative need of the defendant. 
has agreed to in the plea agreement and as recommended by adult probation and parole, consecutive sentences are appropriate here. This is due to the severity of the abuse to the two victims and the extreme need for Ms. Hildebrandt to be rehabilitated so that she no longer will present a risk to the community. The state respectfully requests that she be sentenced to four consecutive terms. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Terry? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I will be brief. As is always the case in cases that come before courts, there are two sides to every case. And as, um, and even in a case like this, that remains the case. Um, there are many, many allegations regarding these two individuals, Miss um, Frankie and my client, Miss Hildebrand. The only facts in this case that are adjudicated facts are those set forth in the plea agreement that she entered into, that she entered into freely and knowingly and voluntarily. Those facts, those adjudicated facts, are significant. They certainly provide a basis for the pleas and provide a basis for the stipulated sentence in this case. My experience with Ms. Hildebrandt is that she is not the person that she has been portrayed to be. But having said that, she has accepted responsibility in this case. She has entered into this plea agreement with a stipulated sentence of four consecutive uh, sentences. She did that at the time she entered into the plea agreement, knowing that that would be the court's order. She is before the court today, knowing that that would be the court's order, and she fully accepts that. She accepts responsibility, and she accepts the consequences for her conduct. And we will submit it to the court on the stipulated agreement. Mr. Terry, you suggested that there are, there are two sides to every case. I generally agree with you. Ms. Hildebrand didn't make a statement to AP and P in in the course of the pre-sentence investigation report. Correct. Why did she not make make a statement? She wanted to reserve her right to make a statement before the court today, and she has a brief statement that she wants to read, Your Honor. Okay. And, and All right. I, Ms. Hildebrand. Go ahead. I sincerely love these children. I desire for them to heal physically and emotionally. One of the reasons I did not go to trial is that I did not want them to emotionally relive the experience which would have been detrimental to them. My hope and prayer is that they will heal and move forward to have beautiful lives. I am willing to submit to what the state feels would be an appropriate amount of time served to make restitution as an outcome. And in answer to your question, Your Honor, I knew that whatever she might say to the author of the pre-sentence report would probably be sound uh, hollow or, and self-serving, and perhaps it does today. But I know that my client, in the statement that she makes to the court today, that that, that, that statement is absolutely sincere. Not Does just Hildebrandt recognize that it's her behavior that that caused the harm to the children that she's referred to in her statement? Your Honor, she recognizes that she was, along with Miss Frankie, um, that that she made decisions with respect to the discipline of those children that were wrong, that caused harm to those children. She fully recognizes that and accepts responsibility for that. All right. Anything else? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Hildebrandt, this, this circumstance is tragic. It's largely, of course, of your making. By any measure, 
Your conduct in this case was disastrous for these children. Adults are supposed to protect children. Adults with specialized training in particular are supposed to protect children. You didn't do that in this case. In this, in this case, you terrorized children, and the results have been tragic. It's what happened to these children and your philosophy in dealing with them frankly seems detached from reality or any objective standard of decency or, or even common sense. And the court finds that it is appropriate that you serve a prison sentence. The court finds under the statute, Utah Code 76-3-401, that given the gravity and circumstances of the offenses, the number of victims and the history and character and needs of the defendant that consecutive sentences are appropriate, the court imposes four one to 15 year sentences to be again served consecutively for each of the four counts of aggravated child abuse. The last thing I do need to tell you is that you only have 30 days to file or perfect an appeal of any error of the court by filing a written notice of appeal with the clerk of the court. If you don't do that, you will lose your right to appeal. That has to be filed in writing and again within 30 days. You also have the right to the assistance of an attorney and to have an attorney appointed if you cannot afford to hire your own. Thank you. We're in recess. Thank you, Robert. That's the latest, the sentencing of Ruby Frankie up next. This has been a special report from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Want to listen ad free? Want advance access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.